Today, we're gonna build a drone battery out of these guys. Let's get to it. Hey guys, Felix here with Quadcopter Guide and on this channel I help you get the most out of your drones and other camera gear. Today, we're gonna build a drone battery. But first, we need to go over why in the world would you want to build your own drone battery? They, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. We've got batteries for the Mavic 2 Pro, which look like this. There's batteries like this if you're into the FPV thing. So why would you want to build your own battery and why would you want to use these things? Well, first of all, these are 18650 cells. They're lithium ion technology. So a little bit different than your normal lithium polymer batteries, which are in most of these kind of DJI camera drone batteries. But as a matter of fact, if you have a Mavic Mini or you saw the Mavic Mini batteries, it was the first DJI drone that had cylindrical cells inside. Well, guess what? If you took one of these apart, which I'm not gonna do, I guarantee you, you'll find something like this. Check this out. Look at that. It's like a perfect match. So why would DJI use lithium ion cells on the Mavic Mini and then on something like the Mavic 2 Pro or the Mavic Air or pretty much every other consumer and professional drone, why would they use lithium polymer cells? Well, there's a couple reasons. A, lithium polymer batteries, like this one with these kind of flat cells, they provide a lot of performance. You can discharge lithium polymer batteries as long as they're made of high quality cells a lot faster than a battery made of lithium ion batteries. So for the Mavic Mini, if you take a look at the motors, they are tiny. So the draw on the battery is relatively low. Even in sport mode, you're gonna kind of limit the current you're drawing out of a battery. So they figured out a way to make it work with two cells of lithium ion. That's why you get amazing flight time. So why would you go lithium ion if you're building your own battery? Well, to answer that, we gotta take a step back. If you saw in a recent video, you can check out the card up here. I have built a seven inch cinematic FPV drone. And that kind of looks like this. A little bit different than your normal DJI camera drone. <laughs> but what powers that is a battery like this. This is a lithium polymer battery, very similar to the batteries you find on your Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic Air, except this has none of that fancy circuitry, overcharged uh, protection, under voltage protection. If you charge this thing wrong, it's pretty nasty, but same kind of performance. You can get a lot of performance out of these, probably even more so just because the motors on this thing are ginormous. If I were to build a battery out of these cells, I could fly longer. Now, I don't know if you saw my previous videos, but with this big old honking battery, I get an average of seven minutes flight time. That's right. <laughs> a little bit different than your DJI camera drones, huh? I started researching. How could I get more flight time? Sure, I could strap a second battery of just that type onto the bottom, but then it gets really heavy and you get a diminishing return on the power you have. You add more weight, sure, you double the capacity that you have on board of batteries, but the weight just doesn't add up. You don't get double the flight time every time you double the battery packs on board, unfortunately. So I researched and I found that if you get high quality, high discharge lithium ion battery cells, these things weigh less than a typical lithium polymer pack, or each cell weighs less than a comparable lithium polymer. So the goal is, to make a pack which also consists of six cells and see what the result is. Will I really get longer flight times? If I were a betting man, I would bet yes, but we still have to build it first. So what you can do is build a six cell pack that's called 6S1P. That would be six individual cells wired in series to get to that 22.2 volts. And then you've got a similar pack to this other white one. But what if you double it. What if you use 12 cells? You still have to be at 22.2 volts. So this would be a 6S2P pack. You'd have two packs in parallel. And for the first one, I think I would just make two 6S1P packs, just two normal battery packs, and then use a cable to wire them up in parallel. So in parallel means you get double the capacity, but your voltage stays the same. Now remember, if you were to wire them up in series, you would add on the voltage and the capacity would stay the same. But what I want is longer flight time. I don't want to change the voltage. 
So that's what I have to do in parallel. Now, of course, I can't expect the same kind of performance. This LiPo battery here is rated at 70C continuous. Now, 1C just means that the battery pack can be discharged at the capacity, but as a rate. So 1C would mean I could get 2.2 amps out of this battery. 70C is 154 amps continuous. I can pull 154 amps out of this thing and the battery will be fine. Now that's the constant rating. It has a burst rating of 140C. That is 308 amps burst. That is an insane amount of power at once out of this battery. I'm not gonna get anywhere near these. These cells, these ones are the Sony Murata VCT6 cells. You don't need to know that, but just know that these are 30 amp rated cells. Now these things being rated at 30 amps, that's one reason I wanna run two of these packs in parallel. 12 cells total, giving me 60 amps if I need it. And that way I just have a little bit more buffer and I won't stress the cells as much. Now you can see the type of flying that I'm gonna be able to do with these kinds of batteries is a lot different than that lithium polymer pack. And that's exactly what this is for. This is meant for kind of just cruising around, using the camera to get nice smooth shots, not doing crazy acceleration and crazy flips and turns. For that, this just won't be powerful enough. All right, enough talking. Let's head over to the bench and I'll show you guys how to build a battery pack. All right, so we start with six identical 18650 cells. I've also got some 14 gauge wire to wire up the XT60 connector, as well as bridge the individual cells. Here are the XT60 plugs and some 20 gauge wire and also the balance cable, which also has 20 gauge wire. Once again, if you are not comfortable doing this at home, then please don't do this. I'm not liable if you screw something up or burn down wherever you are. Now, it makes sense to measure the voltage of the individual cells before you start soldering. Because, remember, we're going to be soldering these things in series. So, the moment you solder them together, let's say there's a different voltage in each cell, it's going to want to balance out that voltage the second you touch the wire. And that's not something you want. So, here we are measuring the voltage of each individual cell before we start. Next, we're going to rough up the contacts of the batteries very carefully to allow the solder to have a little bit better chance of sticking. Here you can see the special insulating paper stickers I purchased because if you look at the top of this cell, here this part is the positive of the battery and if the edge of this insulation on the side were to either burn through with the soldering iron or get bridged by solder or whatever, then you would automatically have a short and that would be bad. So this insulation paper just helps you be a little bit more on the safer side. Sure, you could still have an issue, but let's just reduce the chances of that happening. And this is kind of like what the battery pack will look like with the cells positive and negative lined up. Okay, so initially I plan on doing a 6S2P pack, which is essentially just two 6S packs in parallel in one battery. But the connecting the individual cells is a little bit too iffy for me still, so I'm just going to make it uh, play it safe and just make two six cell packs. And here's what that wiring will look like for our six cell single pack. The XT60 connector is going to go here. And you can see that the black and red of the balancer cable goes to the same connection point or the same battery pole as the XT60. So the numbering is a little bit odd, but I wanted to perfectly match uh, an example I found online. So that's why it's 654321 instead of 123456. All right, so you can see that the balancer lead next to the positive goes to this area between battery 5 and 6. The next one between five and four, the next one between four and three, and the next one between three and two, and finally the next one between two and one. And then once again, the backside of that number one cell it will, will be your negative to the XT60 and also to the zero volt lead on the balancer cable. All right, so let's get the cells lined up like on the diagram, and I'm just gonna use some electrical tape for now to kind of hold them together. Next, I'm going to mark the cells so I know exactly which part of the battery pack 
refers to which part of the drawing. One less thing to have to worry about all the time. Let's bust out the hot glue gun to add a little bit more support. It's slowly starting to look like a battery pack. Next, I'm going to strip the ends of the balance connector cables. And we'll do the same for the 14 gauge wire used for the XT60. This was one of my favorite points in this video because I got to try my new soldering iron after using the $10 Amazon or eBay version. <laughs> it's time to finally try a decent soldering iron. Thanks to Tommy at Miniware for sending that out. This thing is pretty fancy. It runs off USB-C, so as long as you have power delivery or quick charge capabilities in either your power brick, which it comes with, or your battery bank, you can be out in the field and if you have to solder something, no problem. You'll get full 30 watt power and 30 watt might not sound like much, but this thing goes to 400 degrees Celsius. It did a very good job. I'm impressed. For this kind of work, I am going to pick up a more dull tip. That way I can get more of the heat uh, into a smaller space. This tip is a very fine tip, which is of course perfect for soldering flight controllers and the like. And for this kind of work, um, like I said, I'm going to pick up the fatter tip. Pro tip, this blue tacky stuff from Loctite, I believe it is, is excellent for holding your random parts and bits while you're soldering. Now I know some of you guys are more proficient at soldering than I am, so don't rate me on this. <laughs> I just had to get the job done. Here we are pre-tinning the connectors on the XT60 connector. And now we're pre-tinning the 14 gauge wire which will be the main battery lead. It's time to solder up the 14 gauge wire to the XT60. Now make sure you get the negative and positive right on this, otherwise you're gonna have a bad day. And the same thing for the positive lead. Here I'm kind of test fitting the main power lead to see where I want to cut the wire. And we choose some shrink wrap to go over the ends to make it a little bit neater. For this part you can use a heat gun or just uh, lighter or hold your soldering iron close. It'll get the job done. Add the protective cap and you're done. Now we're pre-tinning the balance cable wires. And after cleaning the tip, we're going to pre-tin the battery terminals. Now on this part, it's important to try to do your work quickly so you don't heat up the batteries too much. The next time I do this, I'm going to add a little bit more solder. I had to add more later on and that was kind of annoying. Here I'm cutting and stripping away the insulation for the 14 gauge which will connect the cells in series inside the pack. And let's pre-tin those little connector cables. And again clean the iron. Alright so the first 14 gauge connector is going to go from the minus pole of the fifth battery to the positive pole of the fourth battery. And that's what we're doing here. And we just follow the diagram carefully, looking twice, soldering once, <laughs> and making sure that we have the right batteries selected for the wire that's connecting them. It's one of the reasons you want to label the outside of your batteries so you know exactly which one you're looking at and soldering. For this kind of work, a sturdier pair of tweezers would have done me some good. These ones are kind of meant for fine detail work. They got the job done, but with something sturdier, I would have uh, been a little bit more comfortable. 
and the rest of the 14 gauge connections are done. And this is what our pack looks like so far. It's not pretty, but for first one, let's see if it will work. Okay, so the balancer wires are kind of split up. Roughly half will go on the bottom and roughly half will go on the top. I poked the ones for the bottom through, so that way they're kind of neat and tidy inside the pack. And let's solder the rest of the balance connectors for the bottom. Once you add the balancer connectors to the top cells, according to the diagram, and you add the XT60 power lead which you made or purchased, the pack looks like this. The moment of truth, what happens when I plug it into my battery checker? And look at that, the cells are reporting accurately. Another manual check to make sure we're all good, the negative lead from the multimeter goes into the negative XT60, and with the positive you can test each individual balance wire. And sorry for the glare here, but you can see if you look at the first digit or two digits, that as I go down the line, the correct voltage is showing. A little bit of hot glue for strain relief. And on the balancer side, I'm adding a zip tie also for strain relief. And the kind of tail end of it, I'm gonna hot glue to the side just to make it a little bit more secure. Now I'm gonna wrap the pack in Captain tape. This is a kind of heat resistant tape that's good up to 400 degrees Celsius. Um, just give it a little bit more support. And also in case there's a crash ever, hopefully this will help keep the batteries together and reduce the risk of a short. Now the heat shrink I purchased, I initially bought for making a 6S2P pack all in one, and that's why it's this huge. Um, it doesn't look very good when it's uh, shrink wrapped with the heat gun. Eventually I'm gonna get appropriately fitting shrink wrap and then it'll make this whole thing look a little bit better. I cut some kind of silicone uh, rectangles out of an old phone case to add a little bit more protection to the soldered ends of the pack. And this is what it looks like with the shrink wrap I have on hand. Not too shabby for a first build. So this video went a little bit longer than I wanted to, so stay tuned for the next one where we will test this battery pack in the wild. Hey, thanks for watching how to build your own drone battery. And if you enjoyed this or you learned something new, then give this video a like, it really does help out. And for more content on drones, camera drones, FPV drones, camera gear, all kinds of stuff, then please consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments below what the most interesting part of this was. Which part did you learn or what was new to you? I'd love to hear and uh, let's get into a good conversation down below. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video. In the meantime, check out these videos. That's pretty good, but you should check out this one. <laughs> Thanks guys.